Hi everyone. In this video we're going to be working on how to graph sine and cosine functions. Now you'll see in the orange, that's pretty much the parent function of what a sine and cosine function look like. So what we're going to first do is we're going to kind of focus on what happens when there's an A, what happens when there's a BX and a C, what happens when there's a D. Now the most important thing you want to know is this A right here, this A, this is considered your amplitude. Whatever number that is, it's always an absolute value. And that's going to tell you how high and how low your graph actually goes. Also, it's also going to tell you the highest and lowest point, meaning those are your max and mins. The next part, the B. This B is super important. This B tells you your period. It helps you figure out your period because you need to memorize two things. In sine and cosine, the period is always going to be 2 pi. So to figure out what's going to happen to it, you're going to take your 2 pi and put it over B whenever there's a number in front of X, which we'll work on. The C. The C tells you how far you go left and right, and the D tells you how much you go up and down. Now knowing that, your next step, after you figure out your amplitude, your period, you're going to work on your points. Period over 4. And it'll make more sense in a little bit. But the reason is, any sine and cosine function goes up to, goes up to 2 pi. And you're going to notice that the first period, the first cycle, remember a period is also called a cycle because it's one length, they all have four spaces. So because they have four spaces, they're equally spaced out. That's why we divide it by four, which will make a little bit sense when we actually do an example. Before we actually go ahead and do an example, we need to know what a sine function looks like. If you remember, the number in front of this is your a. So in this case, the one, the number in front of sine is a 1. So that's why your function will always go up to 1 and negative 1, depending on whatever number is in front of there. Also, remember how I told you it was 2 pi? And to figure out the length, you're going to have 1 space, 2 space, 3 space, 4 space. Then the last thing, sine always looks like an S. You know, and many people learn in different ways. But that one period, that one cycle, it starts off at 0 and then at 2 pi. And it kind of looks like an S if you were to tilt it around and shift it. Now cosine, cosine is the same thing. Whatever this number is, that's your A. Whatever number is in front of cosine, that's your A. Reason why it's going to start up here and end down here. Highest point and lowest points, your max and your mins. Now cosine is kind of unique. The way I memorize it is I kind of think of cosine as a cup. Like if you're going to hold a cup. Sine like an S because it starts with an S cosine cup because it starts with C's and it helps you memorize them and also the first period of first cycle is 2 pi okay let's do a, an example so the first thing we're going to do is y equals 4 sine 2x well figure out your amplitude what is your a you got to remember your a is always going to be positive whatever number in front of sine is positive value a is equal to 4 your next thing you got to figure out your period well, we know our period is going to be 2 pi over whatever number is in front of x. So 2 pi over 2 is going to give you pi. Now lastly, the most annoying part is you have to be able to figure out points. To figure out points, you're going to take your period, and remember, we're going to divide it by 4 because it's 4 spaces. In this case, it's going to give us pi over 4. Now the last thing, this is the part where you actually have to graph it. So I'm going to keep this to the side just so that we can have it. Well, looking at this chart, or looking at this graph, we know that sine is going to start off at 0, and there's going to be four spaces. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Four spaces. Because there's four spaces, we need to know that our points is going to be pi over 4. Now, there's a shortcut to this. When you know that your points are going to be pi over 4, you have to figure out the first point, the second point, the third point, the fourth point. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your points and you're going to multiply by 1. Well, why 1? Because this is the first point. Each distance between each line is pi over 4. So you're going to multiply it by 1, which gives you pi over 4. So you know that this is pi over 4. Well, what about the second point? The second point is two distances, so you're going to multiply pi over 4 times 2, which gives you 2 pi over 2, which then simplifies, sorry, 2 pi over 4, which simplifies to give you pi over 2. 
you know that's your second point. Well, what about your third? Same exact process. One, two, three, four. And then lastly, the fourth point, so you're going to multiply by four, and this is going to end up giving you pi. Which makes sense because what is the period? How long is that first cycle? Pi. You see how the last one's always going to match up every single time. So you know this is going to be pi. Well, now you have your points, but what about how high and how low I go? Well, what was your A again? Your A was 4. So you're going to go up to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. As well as negative 4. And that's how high and how low you go. So now the next part is just use your, your just graph everything. So what you're going to do, you have to memorize that sine starts off in the center. The next point is going to go up. Then back to center. Go down back to center. Graphing sine and cosine is the toughest thing because we forget about we forget about these points. You gotta remember first point starts in the center, up, center, down, center. Connect your lines and you get a graph. Now sometimes some teachers will ask you to graph two periods. Well if you need to graph two periods, two cycles, that means you need two of these. So what you could do is you can multiply by five, six, seven, eight and continue the pattern. Or, well, if one period is positive, let's make the other period. All you have to do is, if you have all your positive values, make all these values negative. So negative pi over 4, negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 4, and lastly, negative pi. And then once you do that, we'll continue the next one. Up middle, down, middle, up, middle, and then continue it. And those are your two periods for sine. So you got to remember, sine looks like an S and starts in the center. So going through everything again for sine, figure out your A, the number in front, always positive value. Figure out your period, 2 pi over your B. In this case, your B was the number in front of X, which is 2. Simplify gives you pi. You got to find the point. Take whatever your period is divided by 4, and that's every point is going to be pi over 4 distance away from each other. So then your next step is because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, multiply your points by 1, 2, 3, 4. You get this. If you need two periods, just do the negative sides. Negative of all those values, knowing that sign starts in the center, up, center, down, center. Okay? Now one last one for the cosine. So in this case, you want to find cosine, 3 cosine pi x. Do the same exact patterns. Got to find your a. a is equal to 3. The number in front of that, always absolute value, always positive. Next thing, figure out your period. Period is 2 pi, because that's always what it is, over your b. And your b happens to be the number in front of x, which is pi. So that simplifies to give you 2. So that means that the period, the one cycle, is going to be two lengths. Now you got to find your points. Take your period. Divide it by 4 because there's 4 equal spaces. Simplify it, you get 1 half. Now your next thing is, we'll come back to your chart. Draw your 4 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4. And if you want negative, 1, 2, 3, 4. And let's actually find these lengths. You're going to find the points. 1 half times 1 because this is your first point. 1 half times 2 which ends up giving you 1, 1 half times 3, 1 half times 4. And remember, the last point should always match up with the period. You see how they're both the same exact thing, so you know you did it right. And then just put them in there. 1 half, 1, 3 halves, 2. If you want negative sides, negative half, negative 1, negative 3 halves, negative 2. So now you have everything. So you have to figure out, well, how high and how low am I going? I'm going A distances. So 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Negative 3. Now this is the part where it gets confusing. Well, what am I going to do? Where am I starting from? What is the shape of cosine? you got to remember, cosine starts, cosine looks like a cup. So because cosine looks like a cup, start from the top. Top, middle, down, middle, top and then kind of put a little curve into it 
and then do the same thing on the other side. Top, middle, down, middle, top. Put a little curve to it, and that's your two periods of cosine. So going through cosine again, A is a number in the front, period is 2 pi over B, pi, 2 pi over 5 gives you 2, find your points, divide 2 your period by 4, why 4? Four spaces, one, two, three, four. Then take your points, multiply by one, two, three, four. Remember the last point should always match up with your period. Then come to your graph. Because your cosine, your amplitude is three, you're gonna start off at three, looks like a cup, and then that'll be the finished graph. Alright? Thanks for watching. Hope it helped.